Hi everyone. Uh, I want a quick thank you to the guys that uh, gave me some suggestions. Um, I'm sorry I didn't follow them. Uh, we all know what uh, model I'm doing, looking at the placard. But they were Gavin Booth, Stephen 197106 and Jason Pierce. I hope I've got them right. All very good suggestions and did get me thinking. Uh, reasonably modern feel to the uh, suggestions, so that did help. Uh, Jason's uh, suggestion, I hope I got it right, of the Chieftain. Uh, I looked into that in detail and the um, scheme on it was fantastic. It sold me straight away. Great, wow. But the more I read upon it and from what other people said, they were saying that the Tamiya Chieftain is not the right mark. So I didn't want to start modifications and all that looking for reference. I just want a quick build out of the box. But through my research, a company called Tacon, I forgot that right, actually bought that marker tank out with that scheme with it in the box. So everything would have been there. I thought, great. They're very expensive kits, and the cheapest one I could find was from France. It was about 70 plus pounds. That excluded the postage. So, no, okay. Uh, at some point in the future, I do want to do it. I think it's brilliant. I think it's make a great model, great scheme. Everything about it is right. So at some point, I think I will do. So thank you guys for that. And um, there we are. No surprise. I'll do a quick look in the box, show you what's in it. I won't go into uh, great detail. I'm sure somebody out there has already covered it, hopefully. And then uh, let's get cracking. So I've already had a look inside. Uh, I'll just do a quick look. I don't want to waste too much time. Uh, you get three options. One, two, and three. I quite like the third one at the moment. Typical Tamiya instructions. Uh, transparent parts. Turret, which is very big. Two figures included. That should be fun. Uh, barrel split in two. Wheels, of course. Plenty of. Tub. Beautifully moulded top, beautifully detailed top, very nice. Side skirts. Now I've been looking at this area since I bought the kit. It's a bit sterile looking. It's nice, but I think it could do with a bit more life putting into it. I've got an idea. I don't know whether it will work. It needs to be a quick fix. I don't be spending a lot of time on it. It's very nice though, even though. Decal sheet and a bag of bits. You get your poly caps, some screws, and so. Oh, I forgot about the tracks. I took these out because I've just given them a quick wash and in warm water, and I, I've just set in the hang to try and get rid of that those kinks out there. I don't think it's critical, but but it would be nice to have them flattish. These are beautiful, really nicely detailed. Really nice. So what I'd like to do is to break this into two sub-assemblies, the body and the turret. So what I'll do is I'll release all the parts to do with the body, clean them up, not that there'll be much clean up. And then once that's all done, I can do a mass assembly, almost like a Lego kit. So over a few evenings, I've cleaned most of the parts. 
wheels left and right, other bits, fuel tanks, body, jerry cans and some exhausts, all the little bits in there cleaned. Now I do this because it personally suits me, uh, I just do this because I love it. Now all the parts are cleaned, it's just a mass assembly which I find I find exhilarating so so that's why I do it. Uh, any issues? Uh, there's quite a ridge on these wheels here right at the end on some of them. Uh, what else? A bit of filler required on the toolboxes. Other than that everything uh, looks okay. Now before I get on with assembly um, I want to sort these skirts out first. There's a before and after, but I don't know whether it shows or whether it was worth the effort. So this is the after, this is before. I mean, they're very nicely molded, very nice. Nothing wrong with them really. I just thought I could maybe help it out a bit more, but that's debatable. But I'll show you what I did. It's quite easy, just a bit time consuming. So the brand new blade, very gently and yet yeah, I don't go so far, two, three mil, no more. So now I can get on with this uh, jigsaw puzzle. I hope I've got no missing pieces. I'm going to leave these parts off. So just make sure the wheels are in contact with the ground. Also make sure that they're not splayed outwards as well. Gonna leave it all to set now. Once it's dried, I shall take these wheels off so I can paint them later on.
And the external fuel tanks uh, were okay, but I found there was, um, they didn't fit very well, these end plates. So I've just used a bit of um, Vallejo putty, just a quick fix. There's the jerry can holder to add, but I won't add that to the very last um, because uh, these want painting separately and weathering separately. Also, the light clusters, I've left them off. They can be painted and added right at the very end. Now it says in the instructions to tack this part in place. I don't know why. So I'm just going to ignore it and glue it in place. First thing I do is to uh, take all these wheels off. Uh, the side skirt parts, fairly easy. The front reactive armour, do that next. So I'm going to have these side skirts now. So the side skirts are dry. My next thing was to add this reactive armor to the front here, but two reasons. One, I'd glued the light brackets onto the body and they should have been glued to the reactive armor. So I've just prized them off and stuck them on here now. So I need to do a bit of cleanup around there. But the other thing is I need to keep the top half of the body separate from the bottom half for the time being it will be difficult for me to uh, fit the top of the body on. I need, to, I need to keep them separate for the time being. So I'm gonna leave this part off. So I'll add the front and rear skirts.
Now the rear skirts, or these rear plates, I can't really attach to this part because there's very little surface for them to attach, to be very flimsy. So I need to attach these to this assembly here, like that. So I'm just going to put these um, poly caps on at the front, just so uh, I don't forget and don't lose them. So this, for the bottom half of the body, is as far as I want to go. I wasn't expecting that. I had hoped I could attach it to the front there. That would be one less piece, but because I need these separate for the attachment of the wheels and the tracks later, I need to keep these separate, as I've just said earlier. So that's those three parts and the wheels and the tracks can be painted now. There's a few little peripheral things like uh, ring mirrors, uh, little things like that. Uh, they need to be left up because they're, they're so delicate. They'll be added right at the very end. So I can put this on the side now and I can start on the turret. So all the turret parts have been cleaned, all ready to assemble now. But what I did want to mention, some of the quirky things you get with the Tamiya kit, which is new to me, I did wonder about these extra pieces of plastic card that you get in this bag, the transparent piece and the white piece. It seems on the turret that using this template here, you have to cut all these windows on the side here, all these A's. So that'll be nice, won't it? These CIP or SIP, whatever they're called, is for the white plastic card. They give you a template again. No issue, easy enough to do. It's no problem there. So there's one either side. For the turning cables, they give you a bit of string. So what I've had to do, and I'll show you now, I just use a bit of tummy varnish, doesn't matter, I don't think. Satin or gloss. Few drops there, a bit of water, mix it in thoroughly, and then just put it through and let it absorb. I hang this up, let it dry, and then I'll probably do this application a couple of times just so it's easy to paint.
turret's done now. Most of it. A few peripherals to add, but they'll be added right at the very end after it's all been painted and weathered. But what I have done is that I haven't glued the bottom part. And then once it's all painted, weathered and finished with, I shall take it off. By doing this, it's more accessible for adding the transparent parts rather than masking them. So what I'll do now is add all the gubbins around here. I'll leave the barrel off, it's easy to paint. And then two bits of uh, plastic card bits that were cut out, they will be added once they're painted at the end. So I've applied the first colour, which is uh, a black mixed with um, a flat blue XF8. So I've got no. Uh, Rubber black. So I've painted all the wheels. And with the same colour, I've painted all the shaded areas. Now I'm just going through the motions here because a lot of this stuff, the wheels and what have you, is all going to be hidden by these skirts. You don't want to see much of anything. Now I'm going to do another shade colour. And this will be applied on top. You'll see what I mean in a minute. For the uh, second colour, or the top pre-shading, I've used whole red. So I've gone over those pre shaded colours in a, a couple of tones. Uh, I've used this um, Desert Yellow XF59. I toned it down a bit. And I used this um, mix that I had some time ago. And used that on top. But what I want to talk about is um, these skirts here. Now in some photographs they seem the same colour and they've been painted all in one go but I've seen some that are a slightly different colour so I did want to break up this overall colour and paint it. Uh, I'm going to use uh, deck tan. I'm just going to get a quick light wash, let it dry, see what it looks like, see what it needs another coat. They have to be thin especially using Tamiya paints. They're not ideal for bush work. I could mask it and airbrush it, but um, we don't have to be too fussy about the paintwork on a tank, do we? Or do we? Using a flat brush. Do the other side. Let that dry and come back later and see what it looks like. So I've just sealed all the sub-assemblies with a coat of um, Tamiya's semi-gloss. I keep calling it satin. Uh, which of course darkens everything. Um, I'm trying to think. Uh, I'm trying to think what else I did before I did that. 
it's been a few days now. Um, yeah, I added uh, another thin coat by brush of deck tan to these canvas skirts here. And then the next stage, um, I think I'm going to add oils. I'm not too sure, or whether it's going to straight to um, a dark wash. I'll have to have a think about that. So I'm on with the tracks now. Uh, there's no preparation, I just give them a good uh, scrub, a bit of detergent, and then airbrushed um, some Vallejo steel. Let that dry. I just start to apply some MIG wash, which is a uh, black wash. I've done one already, both sides. I haven't taken any care, I've just, um, I won't use the word slack, but I've just applied it to, with not much finesse, as I will show you. So I'm just going to put these tracks to one side and leave them to dry for a good day at least. So my last stage is for these tracks. Um, you can seal the um, paint and washing if you wish, but I haven't bothered. I'm just going to use some uh, modeling pigment, European Earth. And literally dust it on, willy nilly. Now I'm adding quite a lot because when I do the next process quite a lot of this will come off. And then what I'll do is with a rough bit of sandpaper just take the pigment off the rubber pads. So the bit of string that Tamiya supply after several coats of uh, varnish. So I'm gonna paint now, I'm gonna use New steel and uh, we'll see what it looks like. So I've given the uh, string cut Vallejo steel and then Tammy asked you to cut it using this guide. I just cut it with a bit more to spare. Now this is a tricky bit. Now these attachment points are at different angles, so something to bear in mind. So with everything finished now, painted and weathered, start putting this challenger together. So I'm going to let those tracks dry and then I can start adding the top. So 
So the reactive arm is next. Now there's no real secure pins or anything or lugs to hold it in place, just these little pins here which just fit flush to the surface. So I've cleaned the paint off and I'll be using this glue to help give it a better bond. It's just dawned on me now after assembling the body that I don't think I mentioned what I did after I sealed the paint. Now before I sealed the paint in, I used the body colour and created various shades as you can see here. And then it was all sealed in with varnish. And then the next stage would have been to break up the surface using oils. Now because the Challenger tank is fairly busy, there's a lot going on around here and with the body, I felt that I'd, I'd broken the surface up enough. Now usually I would have used MIG's panel wash, but I decided this time to make my own and use oils. So there's a black there, and I think it's a burnt umber or raw umber, I can't remember now. Mixed a fairly dark tone, and then quite a bit of odorless enamel thin was mixed in. A very weak wash. I then carefully applied it in the panel lines. Once I was happy with the panel lines, I concentrated on other areas like round here. So you can see I've taken the bond bit off. As I said previously, I didn't glue it and I've applied all the glazed bits, one there, one there, and these round here. This was a bit tricky and finicky. So a bit of care around here was needed. So now that's all done. I think I'll just clip this back in. There's no need to glue it. Easy enough. The barrel. And I think um, I think this just clips in as well. There's no need to glue it in. Easy enough. So now I've just got all the peripherals to add, including these bits. So that's all the peripherals I did now, tow cables, wing mirrors, extinguishers, uh, the rear light clusters. These parts that I left off right at the beginning, I left them off because I was just worried about it being awkward adding this top part to the body with the way I went with the assembly. They will add strength. So I don't know whether they would have been a hindrance or not. I'll never know. Turret's done. These identification panels really add a nice bit of contrast to the turret. Machine gun added. Very nice. Just got to add the turret to the body now. I thoroughly enjoy this build. Why wouldn't I? It's a Tamiya kit. I do like building these tanks. So I hope you've enjoyed this build. I want to thank you for watching. And I do hope to see you for the next one.